The Pacific Coast Highway is a 1,600-mile route from San Diego to Seattle along the west coast of the United States. I started my route mid-March in San Diego on the Africa Twin Adventure Sports DCT that Honda is letting me borrow for 2023, with the intention of riding from San Diego to Seattle. In the last episode, I was forced to detour around Big Sur due to record-breaking rain, floods, and landslides along the route. But the best parts are ahead of me. San Francisco, the Redwood National Park, and crossing into Oregon. Good morning, beautiful people from Santa Cruz, California. It's another day, and I am very, very pleased to say that there are no clouds in the sky today. So I'll get to leave here, not in the rain. I am so grateful. <laughs> In other news though, um, there are more closures along my route. So my planned destination today is actually along a road closure. So I found a backup campground and hopefully there's some first come first serve sites there. Otherwise we will be hoteling it tonight. And there's another big section of Highway 1 that has been shut down due to the flooding. So we're gonna go around that, but We'll get to see the Golden Gate Bridge again today. Um, this will be my second time crossing the Golden Gate Bridge and I'm very, very excited. But I have a whole mess to clean up and we gotta get out here. We got miles to do. All right, here we go. San Francisco is iconic for many reasons, but one of my favorites is that it is home to the oldest Chinatown in the United States, so of course I had to stop and get myself some dumplings. And of course, any visit to San Francisco is not complete without a little bit of time spent looking at the Golden Gate Bridge. This little spot at Fort Baker might be one of my most favorite spots that I've ever stopped to stare at the Golden Gate Bridge from, so highly recommend. Point Reyes National Seashore has over 80 miles of coastline bordering a dynamic and ever-changing ocean ecosystem. As the tides go in and out, the table is set for numerous shorebirds feeding along the sandy beaches and rocky shorelines in tide pools. Whales are found offshore year-round, gray whales in the winter and spring, and humpback and blue whales from spring through fall. Seals and seabirds breed and nurture their young, while sea stars, urchins, and anemones thrive in the ever-changing tide pools. Greater Farallones and Cordell Bank National Marine Sanctuaries and California's Marine Protected Areas, together with Point Reyes National Seashore, provide protections to safeguard these ocean and coastal ecosystems.
Good morning, beautiful people from Garberville, California, and a beautiful Best Western here. Uh, we're in a hotel again because I was supposed to camp last night. However, five different backup campsites that I was supposed to stay at were either flooded or the road to get to them was flooded and closed. <laughs> Or we can say that I stayed in a hotel because I traveled with Doodle for a week and we stayed in hotels the whole time because she doesn't camp and now I'm soft. We don't know. We'll find out tonight because I have reservations for the next few nights at different state parks and campgrounds in Oregon along the coast. So the coldest part of the trip will be spent camping. That makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> That is the buzzing to tell me to go get breakfast. So let's go get some food. Humboldt Redwoods State Park is one of California's largest state parks with over 53,000 acres. There are over 17,000 acres of old growth coast redwood forest preserved here, making it the largest forest of its kind in the world. Some of these trees reach over 370 feet tall and live over 2,000 years. The Avenue of the Giants is a 32 mile scenic drive that passes through the heart of this ancient forest, paralleling and crossing Highway 101. Unfortunately, part of it was closed for my visit, but I didn't mind backtracking at all. There are many opportunities in the Redwood National Park to drive through a tree, and some are better suited to motorcycles than others. Cool. Oh my God. Wow. What? What? That's so cool. I made a stop at the Humboldt Redwood State Park Visitor Center and I got to learn all about Charles Kellogg, whose dream was to preserve the great groves of redwoods in the state of California by awakening public sentiment in New York and the United States. On October 7th, 1917, Kellogg began his crusade to protect the redwoods. He toured the United States in what he liked to call his travel log. Kellogg explained his intentions to the Pacific Lumber Company who donated a tree that had fallen long ago. Using a one-man saw, Kellogg cut off a 22-foot section of the 11-foot diameter tree to build his travel log.
the ground here is rather rocky and gravelly, so I can't get my stakes into the ground. But after my experience last March in Big Bend National Park, not being able to get my stakes into the ground and having to pile rocks onto the corners of my tent, I got snow and sand anchors from Exped, which are essentially little bags that you pile rocks or snow or sand into, and then you tie to the edges of your tent where you would normally stake out to wait your tent. And I'm so happy I have these now. <laughs> I forgot that I got so many new goodies since the last time that we had a camping video on the channel, um, including my new Primus remote fuel stove. I'll link it down in the description from Moto Camp Nerd. Um, having a remote fuel stove, like where you have the burner and then the canister or the fuel um, container is separate and not sitting on top of each other, it's been, it's been awesome. I have been enjoying it <laughs> very, very much. I also have that new sleeping bag. It is the winter light from Exped. It's like a five degree bag and it's been keeping me nice and cozy on this trip. Um, that night in Santa Cruz, it was below freezing and that cabin was not heated. And if it was insulated, it could have fooled me. <laughs> when I got up the next morning, there was ice on my bike, but I stayed nice and cozy in my sleeping bag. So I'm super excited about that. The heated sleeping pad liner from Ignic is not new. I actually bought that last year, but unfortunately it's not available anymore. Ignic stopped making them and I haven't found anywhere online that is selling them anymore. So I'm sorry, but I'm so glad that I have it. <laughs> Just simple canned soup for dinner tonight. I'm sorry for everybody who really likes watching me make complicated food at camp. I kind of ran out of time today. I dilly-dallied a bit in the humble Redwood State Park, so I didn't have quite enough time to stop at the grocery store, come here, set up camp, and make dinner before the sun went down. So I opted for setting up camp in the daylight instead of making a fancy meal in the dark. <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me. <laughs> It feels so nice to finally be camping on this trip. California has been experiencing some crazy weather. It's been raining a lot. And unfortunately, a lot of my campsites were either close to rivers or the road getting to them are close to rivers and have unfortunately been flooded or are blocked by downed trees. It's been crazy. The whole like trying to do the Pacific Coast Highway in March, maybe not my best idea. <laughs> well, I'm officially all cozied up. I'm in pajamas. I've got my hand warmers going. I've got the Ignic heated sleeping bed liner going. So I'm nice and toasty. I'm ready for the cold night. I think when I checked the weather, it was supposed to be like 38 degrees. So I'm gonna be so warm. <laughs> And I will see you guys in the morning. In the next episode. Also, my super controversial opinion is that...